And welcome to Hannity. Wow, what a day in court. Well, anyway, coming up tonight, according to the White House, Joe Biden has nothing to hide. At the very same time, the very same White House is blocking an audio recording from Biden's interview with the special counsel, Robert Hur. Now, this, of course, following the interview, the Hur concluded, your president is a, quote, elderly man with a poor memory, you think? A full report straight ahead tonight. Plus, we're going to have more on why the far left Democrats and Democrat like fake Jake at fake news CNN should never, ever be allowed to moderate any presidential debate. And guess what? The great one, Mark Levin, his closing arguments for the sham trial in New York City. He is here tonight, which is where we begin as we head back to New York City, where the kangaroo court was back in session. Today, a massive turning point in this trial. I would say it was a my cousin Vinny moment. You need pause attraction. Anyway, that moment came to life in real time as the so-called star witness, Michael Cohn, just literally crumbled under cross-examination. We'll give you all the details. According to those in the room, jurors literally gasped at Trump's attorney uh, when he appeared to catch Cohn on an outright massive lie. This dramatic scene involved a 90-second phone call from 2016. Cohn testified earlier this week that the call was with Trump about the Stormy Daniels payment. But text messages and call logs they appear to show something very different, and that was that Cohn was likely talking to Trump's bodyguard at the time, a guy by the name of Keith Schiller, about harassing phone calls that Cohn was receiving from a 14-year-old prankster. And according to real-time analysis, even from fake news CNN, quote, Cohn looks like he made that one call after he saw some records from the prosecution, and he just kind of filled in the blank on both fake news CNN and MSDNC. Pundits, they could see the writing is on the wall. Take a look. For me, even with my strong feelings about Donald Trump, my knowledge of how he behaves, I couldn't today convict beyond a reasonable doubt. Michael Cohen is just such a problematic figure. It sort of casts lots of his testimony in doubt, given the passage of time, and makes the district attorney's office look terrible. On a cross-examination, uh, lawyers want to kind of put the, the, uh, the witness in a, you know, build a box around the witness and then slam it shut. That's what Todd Blanche did to, to Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen was was cornered in what appeared to be uh, a lie, I think, to many in, in the room. It would be very hard for me to see a jury that would not have serious questions about Michael Cohen's credibility. I don't think I've ever seen a star cooperating witness get his knees chopped out quite as clearly and dramatically as what just happened with Michael Cohen. I think the punches are building cumulatively. Uh, I think Tuesday uh, there were bruises and today there's blood uh, to extend the metaphor. Uh, yeah, Michael Cohen got gutted on the stand today. Now, you heard it from MSDNC, Anderson Cooper, it's CNN, not exactly a pro-Trump conservative. Uh, if I was a juror in this case watching that, I would think this guy's making this up as he goes along. Beyond devastating. Michael Cohn's credibility problems, they don't even end there. Here's Cohn's former attorney, Robert Costello, telling the world that his former client said that he acted alone on the infamous Stormy Daniels NDA. He doesn't have a truth-telling problem either. Who do you believe? Take a look. He kept on saying, I have nothing on Donald Trump. And then when we got into the discussion of the Stormy Daniels NDA, he said specifically, and I cross-examined him on this, this was my idea. It was his idea to take care of the NDA because he had been contacted by a lawyer for Stormy Daniels who said she was going to claim that Donald Trump had sex with her. Cohen said, I didn't believe the allegation, but nevertheless, it would be embarrassing to Melania. That's Michael Cohen's words. He said, and so I decided to take care of this myself. And Costello testified before Congress yesterday and is saying the prosecution doesn't have a case at all. And Michael Cohn is not telling the truth. And it looks like this exculpatory evidence was apparently hidden from the grand jury by Trump-hating prosecutor Alvin Bragg. Watch this. But basically, they only put in a small... A uh, cherry-picked group of emails. I presented maybe two to three hundred emails and text messages to them. I had them with me, luckily, in chronological order. They put two or three in to evidence. I asked them, are you going to put the rest of them into evidence? And they said no. 
This case never, ever, as we've been telling you night after night, should have seen the light of day. Now, if Judge Juan uh, uh, Mershon had any integrity at all, he would throw this case out on what's called a directed verdict, which we have talked at length about. Don't hold your breath. The Biden donor probably won't do it. This judge made a political statement when, in fact, he did donate to Joe Biden, and his daughter is a Democratic operative. And the left-wing prosecutors are pretty much doing whatever they can do to smear Donald Trump and obfuscate the law. Their goal here is to garner a conviction merely because of the political leanings of the Manhattan jury. Remember, Alvin Bragg ran on a platform to get Trump, just like the AG in New York did. In fact, they're actually claiming Trump's attorneys, lawyers, are not allowed to call in legal experts to give their opinion on this far-fetched legal theory in question. They're lawyers. It's all about the law. This is beyond absurd. And frankly, it's not justice. This is what weaponized, a weaponized justice system looks like in America. It's not pretty, and it's dangerous. It's dangerous if you want to remain a constitutional republic. Now, the Republican candidate for president is forced off the campaign trail, what, we're on week five now? Forced to sit in a New York City courtroom day after day after day. His opponent gets the campaign any place, any, uh, any time he wants. Well, he's not doing very well. Uh, and anyway, facing allegations from a convicted liar and a porn star because of stacked, made-up, still-to-be-defined felony charges derived from a novel legal theory that no one seems capable of explaining, even the most, you know, intelligent lawyers uh, in the country, uh, based on a simple misdemeanor that is past the statute of limitations. And the people who will decide the verdict? Oh, they are from New York City. That's a borough in New York that voted, what, 9 to 1 for Joe Biden, a little less, a little less than 9 to 1? That is called lawfare. This is the weaponization of your Department of Justice. And it's worse, thanks to the left-wing prosecutors, drunk with power. America, pay attention. We're headed down a very dark path here. But one disbarred attorney, longtime criminal, Michael Cohn, uh, is having the time of his life. He even gets to sell merchandise, you know, T-shirts with Donald Trump behind bars. Uh, he's now reportedly very good friends, by the way, with Trump's former arch nemesis, Rosie O'Donnell, on uh, Monday. Well, she reportedly texted Cohn, quote, breathe, relax, tell the truth. You got this. I love you. Tonight, looks like Cohn might need some more encouragement after his humiliating testimony and beat down on the stand today. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.